From South Padre Island to Rio Grande City, this is Local 23 News at 5. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brenda Medina. Child predators are finding their task easier now that children spend more time online than most cases unsupervised. Experts tell Local 23's Joanna Guzman online sex exploitations are skyrocketing. Since the pandemic hit, a handful of Valley teenage girls have been reported missing. It's so easy nowadays to leave the kids in the room and, you know, they're in the room all day and they're on their phone all day. Just this morning, a 22-year-old man was arrested in Donna in connection to a missing 14-year-old girl. Her mother says she met the man through social media. And of course, kids, you know, they're young, they're naive, you know, they, they, they think that everything's okay. Hidalgo County's District Attorney Ricardo Rodriguez says being home doesn't necessarily mean kids are safer. And if heaven knows what they're doing and, and who's trying to contact them, a lot of times it's not the kids that are looking for this. It's these predators that know that they're on their, their phone. Online enticement reports increased 93% compared to this time last year, according to the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Social media is so powerful in their technology nowadays with these phones that they're, they're very savvy and very smart on how to start a contact or a conversation with, with, with children. In June, two Louisiana men were charged with kidnapping and sexual assault in connection to a missing 13-year-old McAllen girl who was contacted through Snapchat. You know, we've heard of situations where it's from, you know, one state in New York all the way down here to the valley or across. It doesn't matter how far or how close we are. If there's predators out there that want to cause some damage uh, and, and hurt someone, they can do it from, you know, from, from, from a far away. Rodriguez encourages parents to stay vigilant and connected with what their kids are doing online. In McAllen, I'm Joana Guzman, Local 23 News. The DA's office is currently working with school districts to raise awareness on online dangers during this pandemic. The McAllen Police Department is asking for your help in identifying a theft suspect caught on surveillance camera. Take a good look at him. Police say this suspect stole a 2003 10 Ford F-150 from a McAllen neighborhood. The victim says the suspect also took tools and electronics. Anyone with information regarding the suspect's identity or whereabouts is asked to contact McAllen Crime Stoppers. That number is on your screen. That's 956-687-8477. U.S. Customs and Border Protection at the Foreign International Bridge sees a big load of drugs worth close to $20,000. Authorities say a 29-year-old man from Reynosa was trying to cross into the U.S. through the bridge cargo facility, transporting a commercial produce shipment from Mexico. A secondary inspection of the cargo resulted in officers discovering 521 packages of meth, all hidden within the floor of the trailer. The narcotics and tractor trailer were seized, the driver also sitting behind bars at this hour. With schools uh, getting ready for distance learning, many students are still in need of Wi-Fi connection. Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez says access to Internet is more important now more than ever. As school districts begin the year online, which is why they have already began setting up many buildings in McAllen with Wi-Fi technology to provide students with free Internet access. The superintendents wanted to make sure that they could reach all of their students uh, at, at home to have distance learning. The categories that we can use CARES Act fund was to bridge that digital divide. Not only is Hidalgo County being proactive to ensure students are well prepared for distance learning, but Harlingen CISD is providing park and learn zones at every one of their campuses to provide Wi-Fi connection for more families. Edinburgh Consolidated Independent School District announcing they are now accepting community nominations for the renaming of Roberts E. Lee Elementary School. The building is located on 1215 West Break Street. Nominations must be submitted by September 3rd. More than 40 cats rescued from a home in Donna. We're told the cats were found in bad shape after being left without care for several days. Officials with the local animal shelter say they're already at capacity when they receive the call about this case. Shelter officials say the caller told them the owner of the cats had to be hospitalized and was unable to care for them. Even though their shelter was full, there was no hesitation from Yaki Animal Rescue. They went to the home to investigate and add they did not expect to find the cats in the condition that they were in. When she got there, um, 
for her surprise, there were 40 cats inside a house, um, kind of like abandoned because their owner was at, at the hospital. Uh, so imagine it was that they were already in very bad shape. Um, their space was um, dirty. Instead of sending the cats with animal control where they could be euthanized in a short period of time, Yaki Animal Rescue took in all the cats and now needs your help. They're offering to pay all vet bills if you would like to foster one of these cats. They just need a little time to be under a safe roof until they find their forever homes. The City of Mission announcing free COVID-19 testing at the Mission Event Center located at 2425 Ruby Red Boulevard. That's taking place on August 15th and 16th. And the Alton Recreation Center located at 349 Dawes Avenue on August 16th, beginning at 9 a.m. until supplies run out. The city is asking the public to have a cell on hand for QR access. Residents do not need to show symptoms in order to be tested. No pre-registration is required. A PC oral swab test will be conducted on anyone six years of age or older. Republicans and Democrats in Congress have not been able to reach a coronavirus aid agreement, even as the expiration of financial lifelines leaves millions scrabbling to cover their bills. Local 23's Anna Wernicke reports from our D.C. newsroom. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell canceled this first week of the August recess. He said to continue work on the next round of coronavirus relief, but the two sides haven't negotiated since Friday. Republicans wanted to reach agreement on all these issues. McConnell blames Speaker Pelosi and Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer for the stalemate. These two individuals are letting the wish list of wealthy coastal elites stand between every working family in America. Democrats say they're willing to negotiate, but it's the White House that won't budge. The White House got an offer to meet halfway and said, that's not what we're going to do. We insist on the skinny version. The skinny version is inadequate to meet the challenge of the moment. The White House seems to be standing pat after the president signed executive orders over the weekend to fund supplemental unemployment payments, encourage eviction protections, and defer payroll taxes. The president acted aggressively and boldly because nothing else was going on. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow says so far Congress hasn't challenged the president's orders. Democrats are in a corner on that. I don't think they're going to oppose it. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's not interested in wooing the White House unless it agrees to a wide-ranging plan that spends at least two trillion dollars. Republicans say that's too expensive. In Washington, I'm Anna Warnicky.